school students, Miss Hanovich here. Hi, everyone. This is Mrs. Hebert. Um, and this is it, friends. We're about to wrap up absolutism. We've barely been on it at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutism light this yeah, year, which exactly. is fine because this, this is a topic that you're going to pick up on next year. You'll start with this in Global 2. You'll touch on this. So you're getting a little bit of an intro um, this year. Yeah, so when next year you're in Global 10, make sure that you, you know, raise your hand when you talk about absolutism and seem super smart. And when they go, <laughs> you know, how do you know this? You go, oh, my amazing teachers. Ms. Hanovich and Mrs. Heber already taught us all of this. Exactly. Perfect. All right. So um, a couple of things. We're going to watch this video. We're going to talk a little bit about absolutism. Um, I want to get right to number two, which is the next slide. What we're asking everyone to do is to look at this list and please just see if you're missing any assignments. Um, right. The quarter's wrapping up. So obviously we want to get all assignments in as soon as possible. And our grades are going to be due at the end of next week. Yep. So the issue with that is that you all have to really check and make sure that you've submitted these assignments. An easy way for you all to check, especially for the classwork, projects, writing, these two categories, is to go on Google Classroom. At the top, click Grades, and you will see everything there that you submitted. Now, don't get confused. If you see something there that's missing and the date is from, I don't know, March 20th or something, mm. don't worry about it. Don't waste your time completing that assignment because it's not counting for the fourth quarter. What we recommend, just send us an email. Please. Send yeah. us an email and we can tell you exactly what you're missing um, and if we still need anything from you. Absolutely. And you'll see, too, it was on the last slide, like, um, it, the, you will have an extra credit assignment for today. That is extra credit. So it that's not counted as like this one of the official um, assignments, but you know make sure you do it because I think some of us do need a little boost in our grades. Mrs. Hebert and I were a little disheartened at some of the M's that we had to put in our grade book for missing. Right. Um, so the more you do, the better off you're going to be when it comes to the end of the quarter. Exactly. And for those of you who have been, because remember, these aren't the only things that you've done this quarter. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of lessons that Ms. Hanovich and I have done where we've told you to take the note sheet and file it in your Google Drive, to do the document and file it in your Google Drive. Um, so that's really been up to you to do. However, many of you have been sharing that stuff with us or um, asking us questions. And that's great. We can, you know, it's very clear who is putting in um, a full effort here, 100% effort. And yeah. we, we can tell even though it's online. And we appreciate it. We do. We appreciate it a lot. For sure. All right. And it doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, it doesn't. That's true. All right. So with that being said, all the admin stuff out of the way, let's talk a little bit of history real quick. Let's talk about this absolutism, which you should, you know, have skimmed. Obviously, you did the vocab assignment. So you do now know a little bit about it. Right. You had a little bit of an intro to this on Tuesday when we asked you to complete that vocabulary assignment. Mm -hmm. And it kind of stinks doing this online because Ms. Hanovich and I love this topic. We do. It's a really fun topic in history. It's, a, it's really, really fun. Um, but with that being said, again, at least you'll get to do it next year in Global 10. Mm -hmm. um, so, age of absolutism. Absolute, right? I always, you know, that's always the key word. Absolutism, you hear the word absolute. And I always think of um, people, absolute rulers rule absolutely. Yes, they have absolute control over pretty much your whole life. Everything, <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the reason is because a lot of monarchs, and by monarchs, of course, we mean kings or queens, they want to increase their power and control everything that their subjects are doing. Their government, religion, just their lives. And we see a lot of this in Europe, specifically France, Spain, England, and Russia. Right. Um, and they justify themselves. They say, listen, I should be able to control everything because I have the divine right, which is a concept we've kind of studied before, right, Miss Hebert? Yes, this should sound familiar to you all. We, I feel like we've spoken about the word divine. Yes. Um, if you think back to the beginning of the year, I think we spoke about it in Egypt, in China, with yep, the mandate of did. heaven, um, with the pharaohs in Egypt claiming that they, you know, they had the power to rule Egypt because the gods gave it to them. Um, and here we go in the, the 1800s, we see these absolute monarchs saying that God has given them the power to, uh, to rule yep. and to do what they did. So that divine right is the right to rule given by God. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, was perfectly said. Um, you know, and any kind of command that comes from a royal, from the king or queen, that's really God's will. Right. 
and people went with it. The people who lived under these absolute rulers, they they went with this for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And that key difference there on the bottom, the difference from the Mandate of Heaven, you know, we talked about that cycle where the Mandate of Heaven could be lost, and like a dynasty can lose that. Mm -hmm. um, usually with in Europe, those families held that forever. Yes, they kept all of the ruling power in the family. Mm -hmm. Um, so why? What happened here? What 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 brought this about in Europe? Well, again, we gotta go back to that Renaissance. I'm telling you, that Renaissance really changed, you know, human history for a lot right. of reasons. Right, it's like a reset button on history. Really? That's a really good way of putting it. Um, and we had talked about that power of the church is weakened. Um, we've talked about that a lot. We talked about King Henry VIII, especially, you know, who totally, um, splits from that church because he wants to be in control of it. Um. Right. That reformation really does help bring these monarchs into power. And that power struggle even began, I don't know, I'm thinking back to the beginning of the quarter in the Middle Ages. Yes. When you had that, that first power struggle between the, the kings and the, the, the Catholic, Catholic Church. Church. Yeah, because, you know, who's the loyalty going to go to? Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we have now the ex age of exploration, monarchs see a, um, a way of making a lot of money off of that, a lot of wealth. They want to be more powerful. They want to control more lands, colonies, things like that. They want to compete with each other, too, because it was like, all right, Portugal, okay, you took over uh, Br Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, so they had Brazil, and then maybe Spain was like, all right, well, we're going to get more land than Brazil, so we're going to take over all of these other colonies. Right. So they become, they get, like, competitive with each other over um, what they could claim as their land during the Age of Exploration. Yep, and and exactly, and a lot of that is for the money, who wants more of the natural resources from all of those right. colonies. Um, and then five is that this common belief that human nature of man is bad, and by man they mean, like, all humans – are, are bad and that you need a very strong monarch to control everyone. Otherwise, they'll just be chaos. They'll be like the purge, right? From like yeah, that yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and again, remember, we're, we're after the Renaissance, printing presses are out, people, literacy is up, they're reading all these theories now, these philosophies that does certainly help contribute um, mm -hmm. to that and idea. The absolute monarchs wanted to uh, rein people back in. Yep. And stop them from reading and stop them from questioning and just kind of go with the flow, go with their rule. Exactly. And that's pretty much like a very, I would say like a brief overview, right, Miss Hebert, of absolutism? Yeah, I agree. If you all keep on going in these slides, you'll see like more of the specifics of absolutism yeah, in these country. different European countries. Mm -hmm. What you'll notice is like, one gets really, really powerful, and then it kind of has some internal struggles and... Uh, not necessarily falls apart, but loses the attention. Then, like, another country comes in, and they kind of rise, rise, rise with their absolutism, and same thing. They, they kind of um, fall, fall apart a little bit, and then another country comes in. So, like, it's like a rise and fall all across Europe with these absolute monarchs. So, it's definitely, you know, after you're done listening to this video, um, you can go through, it's the same slides, go through the slides again. Um mm -hmm. Because it'll give you more detail, and like I, we said, you are going to be so prepared when you sit in that seat, yep, in uh, September for a global 10. Mm -hmm. um, so now, with that being said, you'll have a link on Google Classroom, on my eboard, on Ms. Hebert's website, for the mm -hmm. optional extra credit. It's a couple questions about absolutism, and we highly recommend you do it. Please, please. Definitely do it. It can do nothing but help your grade. Yes. And um, as always, email us with any questions. You are probably going to hear from us a bit sooner than Tuesday, next Tuesday. Uh -huh. Or this upcoming Tuesday, because we just want to talk about what's going on for next week in terms of, you know, our class. Um, So definitely be on the lookout. And I think that's all I got, Mrs. Hebert. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. All right. So we will talk to you all very soon. Miss you guys. Hope all is well. Miss you. Email us. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.